fizz with my day wood, also for my weak wood. Uh, Hebrews 12. I just quickly want to do verse 1. Also, as we've seen, Don Pretorius, that went into glory. He has run the race. Yeah, he has finished. And uh, God has just, yeah, given us the testimony of his life. Also as an encouragement for us to move full out ahead. Amen. Let's read. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance. The race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer, the perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Just do there. What are we saying? From chapter 11, the writer, we believe he's Paul, but the writer explains everything that all these men and women of God did by faith from Abram, from the beginning. And the testimony of their lives, how that is supposed to encourage us to run the race with endurance that God has set out for us. But you know, sometimes when we hear testimonies of, you know, I trusted God for this. I had to trust God for breakthrough for this 10,000 rand. And then uh, somebody came and gave me 100,000. Or I trust God for this job opportunity. And then he gave me this amazing opportunity. And then you think, he trusted the Lord for three months. I trust the Lord for five years already. And I don't have the, the breakthrough. And you feel discouraged by the testimony instead of encouraged so somewhere I need to make sure I cannot compare myself in the flesh with somebody else because their testimony of breakthrough their testimony what they are going through is supposed to encourage me and God has said it in such a way that you will not be able to run the race with endurance you will not be able to run it full out with your eyes fixed on Jesus you will not be able to do the race but go here go there go whatever if it's not that you can take the testimony of the people around you and of those who went before you. It's in the light of the testimony, in the light of the testimony of what God did in people and through people, that he says, therefore, therefore you are able. Therefore I can expect this of you. Therefore I believe you will be able to run the race with endurance. We need one another, and we need the testimony of Christ. And the testimony is not just, I trusted the Lord for this to happen for 10 years, and after 10 years, it happened. No. There's a testimony, I'm trusting the Lord for all these years about this situation, that it will change. Nothing changed. But I'm standing firm in Christ, and I'm saying, God is my God. I will honor him. I will praise him. I will be excited about my God. Doesn't matter what. That's an amazing testimony. That's an amazing testimony. Testimony is not that everything of my circumstances changed. The testimony is that I'm standing with Christ, in Christ, on who he is, and I'm setting my eyes on him and him alone. That I'm running the race with endurance. That is your testimony. Your testimony is that you're running the race with endurance. I set on Jesus Christ when there's a hell of a lot of temptation not to set your eyes on Jesus Christ. That is a testimony. Are you with me? There's nobody here sitting without testimony. Hallelujah. And your testimony, somebody needs the encouragement from your testimony to run the race, for them to be able to run the race with endurance. So your mouth, you need to open your mouth and bring forth the testimony. Not that we must just preach, preach, preach to one another and tell one another, change this, change that. No, no. The testimony of what God is doing in your life, the testimony of how you are standing by faith, so that you can be strengthened to run the race with endurance. That, that testimony, somebody needs to hear it. Because God decided that your testimony must encourage them. 
to run the race. Your testimony will enable them to run the race with endurance. How selfish if you will keep quiet about Christ and what he is doing and how you're believing in him, how you're standing in him, how you want to honor him, how you love him. That is selfishness. Not one of us, but I'm just saying. Are you with me? We are surrounded by such a great cloud. Such a great cloud. Such a great cloud. Everybody say, such a great cloud. Oh, try some drama. Such a great cloud. Such a great cloud of witnesses. But so many times, we take the witness of the sin. We take the rubbish. We, there's such a lot of things where I feel I'm drowning in it. I'm being suffocated by what I'm surrounded with. God will help you. God will help me. But if I cannot see Christ in it, if I cannot take the testimony of what God is doing in you, through you, then I will be drained by people. Oh, it doesn't mean we are not sometimes drained, but many times we are drained because we are in performance. Or we, I try to solve everybody's problems. The Holy Spirit didn't call me to do that. Hello? And then somebody, then God can bring somebody there, but you need to hear Holy Spirit. At one stage, man, it was in the morning early when I was staying with 30 guys in one house. And then by 11, 12 o'clock, everything is type of settled. About all the stuff that we must pray through and work through. And, what. and then I said, God, I cannot anymore. And I just experienced the thing of you try to solve the thing and you are not discipling. You are not giving them discipline you're not giving instruction in that sense solutions in that sense but you just care for them in your counsel but the counsel is not just to care for them to care for them must be a commitment a heart's attitude but in the context of i care and in the context i must be there with compassion instruction and discipline must come Hello. So suddenly I would tell, tell somebody, um, I want you to go and work through 1 John 4, and I want you to pray through this and this and this and this. Okay. And then when they want to see me again, did you work through that and, and pray that and, and did this, this, this? Not yet. Okay. I pray that God will help you to do that first, and then come and see me. And for some reason, a lot of guys, they, the problems are solved. Not that they didn't do it, but I believe also a lot became more the pattern that God wants us to give, and that is discipleship. Not without love, speak the truth in love. Amen. But if somebody wants your attention the whole time, but they don't want to go and do what you ask them to do, they are just manipulating you. They're just playing a game of manipulation. Don't go with that in Jesus' name. Why? You're treating them as if they are illegitimate children. The Word of God says, no child is without discipline. No child is without patterns being given in where they are challenged to change certain things in their lives. But they are challenged because they are children. Let's say, I'm challenged because I'm a child. If you are a genuine child of God, not an illegitimate, not a fake child, then discipline will must come your way. You must be challenged. Your flesh needs to be challenged. You with me? Since, since, since we have, are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off. You can do it. You can throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. But it's not just deal with everything that I must throw off. Deal with the thing. And I'm focusing on this thing that I'm supposed to throw off. I'm focusing on the sin that's so entangling me. No. 
Focus on the testimony. Focus of, on the encouragement from people around you. You will not make it on your own. When you focus on the sin that you must deal with, with the, with the burdens that you must lay down, you will not make it. You're not going to make it. Why? Because it's against the pattern of God's word. So let's do the wake-up call to, our, to ourselves. I need my brother, I need my sister. Stompy became Stompy, and this part of the thumb didn't hop along and live now in puff order. It actually died. You won't believe it. But for some reason, we believe in the body of Christ that the Stompy, that part, will, will be able to live on forever. <sighs> Maybe this was for a prophetic drama. All that I say with that, my brother, my sister, come on. There's no breakthrough if we cannot draw from one another. If you feel threatened by the testimony of that person, if you feel inferior to that testimony, if you feel superior, if you feel okay because you see how at least some other guys are also struggling, it is okay to know that they're also struggling. But you have a testimony that in your struggle, you will stand. Amen. So easily entangles us. Let, and let us run with perseverance. The race. Oh, yeah, I have that other example. Um, who will I use now? Mr. David? Mr. Mr. He? Yeah, yeah, why not? You two come here. God says there's burdens, there's sin that so easily entangles. It's there. First of all, have the guts to be honest that it's there. Now run the race with endurance that I set on Jesus Christ. You will have a hell of a race. Are you with me? Don't try to run. Then, <laughs> then you're going to, your mom, mom going to sue me. Okay. Are you with me? Or just walk a little bit. Okay. But God says, run the race with endurance and you feel guilty. And no, walk. Uh, and you feel guilty because you don't get it right and it does not work. And stop. Take this off because you saw the testimony of others and the sin that so easily entangles. Okay. We know how he can run. Well, he doesn't have to. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> that was just the decision to run. My brother, my sister, let's follow God's pattern. But if the things are there, then uh, there's always, we can be professional blame shifters. It's not possible. It's not possible. But let's trust God. Amen? That we will run the race with endurance. How marked out for us there's a race that is marked out for you marked out for you and you will not be able to run that race if you don't take off the burdens and the sin that so easily entangles if you sit with that issue if you sit with that thing if you sit with that self-condemnation you sit with all the reasoning why a lot of stuff you cannot do so be it so be it but you will not run the race that is set out for you. You will run some other race, you know. There everybody starts. And here you just take shortcut through the field. God gave you the grace and the wisdom how to get there so much sooner. Here you just cut through over the grass and not with all the other guys. Everybody on the pavilion is just going to laugh at you and say, what a clown. It's not about them laughing. It's about how ridiculous. It's not going to work. So we can moan and groan about the fact that we must run the race. But that's not where I want to go. But you don't know where you're supposed to go. But you just go by faith. I said on where is the, the wind strip? What is the wind strip? That's good. The finishing line. You know, the finishing line. You just want to see the finishing line. Your eyes set on the finishing line. Too many times we want to know how far still. 
And where is the finishing line? So that we can understand where we are running to. No. He says, I set on Jesus Christ. The author and the finisher. Where he stops, there. That will be the finish line. But he's here. He's the author. He is the pioneer. He will help me to pioneer, to break through every day. Every day. Every day. He will be here. But he will also be there. There so that I can know where I must go. Here so that I am able to go. The author, the one that has a strategy for today, the pioneer for today. But the perfecter that I will be perfect in the race. Oh, I will have my ups and my downs. But there he has won it already for me. I'm running as a winner as if I am already there. One John. I know you all know that you are just too shy to say it. 1 John 4, 4. We have overcome. Not we gonna. We have overcome. Why? For greater is he that is in me than he who is in the world. It's already here. The overcomer is living in me. Victory is living in me. Victory is living in me. You already there in him. But you're also here with him. Running the race. But your destiny is secured in Christ already there at the finishing line. You with me? Let's take courage in that. Let's take courage in that. Jesus, author and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. For the joy set before him, for the joy set before you, <laughs> you have a race to run and it's not easy necessarily. Or the joy set before you. Not the joy when you go over the finishing line. The joy in the running. Not the joy in the finishing. Hello. Yes, enter the joy that your master enjoys. When it, everything is finished. But for the joy set before him, he went to. He went into death. What a joy to die to yourself. <laughs> Not necessarily, eh? Where you find the scripture also? The guys that made the juice. Where do you find that? Count it. Pure joy. Hallelujah. Count it pure joy. Pure joy. James 1 was 1. Count it all joy. Count it pure joy when you fall into various trials because you know that the testing of your faith will produce such a lot of excellent qualities in you so that you will be able to stand so that you will be able to stand where does that take us let's see verse 3 consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart in your struggle against sin you have not resisted to the point of shedding your blood in your struggle against sin you will stand. Let's say, in my struggle against sin, I will stand. It doesn't mean in your struggle, the struggle will just be over. But in the middle of your struggle, you will be able to have the capacity to stand. Are you with me? So don't get discouraged when the trial is there. Don't get discouraged if you must fight certain things. Yes, you can grow weary. But that's where you need the prayer of the brother. That's where you need to, to read about the guys that went through a lot of stuff. But they were able to stand. That's where you realize you need your brother and your sister. Hello. Are you with me? You have completely, then he says what? If you must be able to stand, even in the midst of the struggle, you need to fight. You have a fight with the flesh. You have a fight with your flesh. But God says the battle belongs to him. The God that you serve will fight for you. But if the God that you serve is your flesh, then it's just you with your flesh. And your flesh must fight your flesh and it will never work. 
It will never work. It will never work. But if you can surrender to Christ, how? He says, you must run the race with endurance. You must have your eyes fixed on Him. You must look at what He has done. You must consider Him in the sense of give Him the place of honor. You must see how He did it. Okay, that's wonderful. And okay, I see. I didn't give my everything in the struggle against sin. What is the next point? You have completely forgot this word of encouragement that addresses you as a father addresses his son, saying, My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you. Do not lose heart because you think the devil comes with condemnation. God comes with discipline and the devil says, See, you are always wrong. There's always mistakes. You're never going to make it. You're never going to make it. As long as he can get you to forget that God is treating you and honoring you as his son, as his daughter, and because he loves you, he gives you discipline, not because you make mistakes. He wants the breakthrough for you. He, has, he sees the potential in you. He decided that this race you will be an Olympic athlete. Finish. It's not your choice. He decided that you will be that quality athlete. And therefore, you will have a certain discipline. Now, the problem will be if you don't see yourself going to the Olympic Games. If you cannot see yourself doing that, you will always have a struggle. And it will always be too much. And it will always be just a burden. And it will always be a, a hellish thing to receive discipline. It will always be a personal thing to take offense, an opportunity to take offense, to get hurt, to get discouraged, to be dismayed, and what, what is that noch? All those stuff. Why? Because you don't see the potential in you that God sees. Hello? You just want to run for fun. You can run for fun. Okay. Well, seasons in the sun. There's such a song. You can run for the fun. Yes, you must enjoy it. Count it all joy. But you must understand the potential that God sees in you. How your father has an awesome faith in you. And then, okay, God, I need, I need to have more people speaking to my life. I need coaching. I need the mentoring. Because I know what you have for me is awesome. For my future, there's an awesome destiny. I need, therefore, not to, for people just to tell me all my mistakes. Ah, come on, guys. We know when we are in the wrong. And the enemy then comes and confirms it and tells you what type of identity you have because of your mistakes. God comes and tells you. Your identity be because of his love and because of his discipline on you. If there's no discipline, then it's because God does not love you and he doesn't believe in you as his son. Oh. So for me to receive God's love and in the greatest commandment, so that I will be able to receive his love so that I can love the Lord your God with all your might, your strength, everything, and then your neighbor as you love yourself. For you to be able to love God, you need to receive his love. And receiving his love is not just the comfort and sometimes even the feeling or the assurance or by faith I take his love. But if I receive his love, I will also receive discipline. Because everyone that he loves, he disciplines. So when I take discipline, it's a form of me accepting my father's love. I accept that I'm his son. I accept that he's my father. I respect his dealings with me. And so I receive his love for me. So in this discipline that I take, this is the way you're supposed to run. And this is how you need to practice. This is what you're supposed to do. When I do that, then Paul says, I'm driven by his love. His love compels me. His love is the driving force tomorrow. Because my father believes in me. He gave me this pattern because he believes I can do it. He believes I can run the race with endurance. 
He believed I can fix my eyes on him, author and perfecter of my faith. He believed I can do that. And that's why he gives you discipline. Like a father or a son. So yes, I have a spiritual father, Dr. Jonathan David, and he spoke a lot into my life. Said a lot of stuff. But then also now, oh, I don't have a lot of meeting. I don't have meeting for him. Sometimes I'm SMSing him, and then he doesn't even answer. Or he doesn't do this, he doesn't do that. So, oh, it's for you to evaluate and judge his performance. That is a pathetic reasoning. But with the patterns that he laid down, even in his teachings, I need to hear his heart. I need to understand his heart. I need to understand what... God is saying to him, not because he's perfect, but God's guidance is perfect. Hello? And if he decided, I must be with that man, then he could decide I must be with him because Dr. Jonathan is going to make specific mistakes that I need to learn from with an attitude of not judging him, but of honoring him. And I need to learn from his specific mistakes, but also from his specific, specific breakthroughs and principles that God showed him. With accuracy. It's about God's perfect guidance for you to be connected in a certain way. Are you with me? But oh, I don't see them. We don't see them a lot. So uh, we had other mentors, you'll see in our lives, when I got married even. And then uh, we went to Sampi, Fanikar, him and his wife. And we had this thing of, you can say what you want. That's the dealing. It's not, we, we discuss before the time what we are going to discuss with him. No. She can say whatever she wants. I can say whatever I want. And I don't know if you've seen that with marriage counseling. And then the man, and I say, no, we're going by faith. And we have, we have challenges, but we are standing and we are going full out. And then your wife starts to speak. And you think, am I married to you? You know, all the things, you know. That she believes must change. Man, you know. And then the worst. Then they take her side. <laughs> but, but we need that. We need that. So we had them. And uh, then at one stage when they went a different way. And, and we said, who? Then we have Um Harry and Tani Mariki. And so... Even some that sometimes there were some com communication. Then he went to heaven. And not Corona took him there, but the Lord. And then um, Harry and Tani Mariki, both of them, um, hospital think it was Corona, but God's on, in control. So it was their time. Hello. And they went to heaven. Now we have all, all those mentors are gone. We have just Um Yanni, Tani Anna. And you know Um Yanni, Tani Anna that came and minister. And Tani Anna, that's like a strong. She's a strong lady. So we have, we have them still as, as mentors, but when we have a meeting with them, it's obvious. Jeline is right, and I'm wrong. So I need other mentors. I'm not going to fire them. They will be still there. I love her very, very much. I love her very much. We had once, if I can take the moment. In 1999, we went to Dr. Jonathan for the first time, and he, she was, um, Janet and Anna was with, also for the first time meeting Dr. Jonathan. And we, in the evenings, we had worship like three, four hours. They take all the chairs away. Three, four hours you stand. And three of the four is singing in tongues. And as we would stand, then this lady is in front of me, like against me. And then I will literally move. And it's five minutes, then she's worshipping here in front of me again. And this Tani Anna, she got so angry. <laughs> so when we put our Bibles there so that after a while maybe we could sit, she put her Bible next to mine again. This lady, Tani Anna came, she took her Bible and put it up. Came back, she came and sat next to me and said, I will protect you for the right wife. <laughs> so so uh, that was the first thing that she told Jeline. You need to thank me. <laughs> I protected Cornelius. <laughs> ah, yeah. But in this season, we are praying. 
And I say, God, who must speak into our lives? We, me and Jeline, we can sit, and she can, I can say anything, and we better. And we need that discipline. We need somebody to challenge us with things that we don't like what they say. If you don't have somebody like that, you are, you are not accurate. You're not in the right way. Because run the race with endurance, discipline, it says here in verse 11. Is it 11? Yeah. No discipline. No. No. No discipline seems pleasant at the, at the time. But painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Everybody say trained. So it's not like I've been dis discipled and I disciple others. And it's good to hear input. Trained. Training means I practice to run a race of 800 meters and I'm dead. But I'm supposed to go 40 kilometers. I'm dead after one kilometer. Oh, self-condemnation. I failed. Then I try and I stop at 10. I stop at 20. I stop at 25. I stop at 30. And I'm dead. Every time i dead. And I can stop at 15 kilometers because I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I cannot anymore. For those who are trained. Trained means the process. I choose to accept the process, and I know the process is because of the faith in me, the love for me. The faith in me, the love for me. The faith in me, the love for me that my father has. So, or I can just remember every time I failed to get to 80. I failed to get to 80 kilometers. I failed. But every time I'm getting more fit, more fit, hello. Don't grow weary. Don't grow weak. That's verse 12. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. Make level paths for your feet so that the lame may not be disabled, but rather healed. The lame may not be disabled. We will feel lame. We will feel discouraged sometimes. Do not lose heart when he rebukes you because he does not condemn you. Do not lose heart because you know that he believes in you and he loves you. Are you with me? Give yourself to be trained. But training is training when you can feel it in your body. I'm tired. I'm tired because I'm trying. But we see it so many times in the negative. Then I want to quit. I'm trying and I'm trying and I'm trying. Awesome. What a testimony. I'm trying and I don't get it right. And I'm trying and I don't get it right. What an awesome testimony. The testimony is that you try again. And you try again. What is that? We call it training. There's a fruit of righteousness and peace for those who are trained in discipline. Trained. In discipline. Your testimony is that you are trying again and pushing yourself, trying again. Not that you already made it. Your testimony is not the finishing line. Your testimony is the, in the training. Your testimony is in the training. Amen. Oh, my brother, my sister, let's go for this. Can we? Please, accept his love also in such a way. Amen. I'm first going to leave it here. But, uh, yeah. I'm leave it here. In the discipline, last thing. In the discipline. It's in your head. Right now. The interaction with the word. You are trained in your head. You are pushing. To take a discipline. To put certain thoughts in the right pattern. Your heart. And your emotions. And your attitude. In the right to put it and repack it, reshuffle, re, redo it. Put the puzzle pieces together more and more. So that the picture that God has, so that that can come through 
and that you can see, wow, wow, wow. For that what God has for you. Don't get frustrated if it doesn't make sense. When God says, put this puzzle piece there. Put this puzzle piece there. And he will purposefully. Don't give, he will not give you everything like the next one, the next one, the next one, the next one, the next one. He will take the one piece and say, put it there. Put it there. Put it there. Put it. And it doesn't make sense because he loves it. When you must walk by faith. When, when it's not about that you are intimate with a picture but that you will intim be intimate with him. It's for him about you building the puzzle with him and not for you to see the whole puzzle. That's not the thing. It's about father and son building a puzzle together. His agenda is doing it with you. His agenda is... But if you sit there frustrated the whole time, while well, he wants you to enjoy the journey in building this puzzle with him, but you are just frustrated because the puzzle is not built. And you cannot see the full picture. And he will not show you the picture of what we're building from. That can be frustrating. Are you with me? You can ask God to show you the picture of the whole puzzle. You can do that, but nine out of ten times he will not show you. Because he's jealous for your love. He's jealous for your attention. He's jealous for you to enjoy not the completion, but for you to enjoy him in the process. Please, let us enjoy that. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Father, that you just come and you help us in this, Lord. Give us your awesome, awesome grace. Forgive us for being frustrated with people, first of all, and not seeing what you are doing in and through them. And the quality decisions that they can make, Lord, help us to draw strength from the cloud of witnesses around us, Lord. As you believe, then we will be able to run the race with endurance. I set upon you. Forgive us for looking in so many other directions while running the race, Lord. We will not stumble because we, will, we choose today to fix our eyes upon you. Eyes upon you. And we will stand in the midst of the struggle against sin because of your grace. Help us to take your discipline, Lord, and not take condemnation in the discipline. Not take a performance, but see your love, see your faith in us. Help us to see that, Lord, and to receive that. We honor you for that, Father. We thank you that we have the, the privilege of doing life with you. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. And all say, Amen. Amen.